are only associated with certain plants and plant classes, right? So if I've got a greater array of plant species out here, that also means that underneath the ground, I've got a greater array of what? Microbial species, right? And yes, I've got a greater array of roots, okay? Whereas you say Minnesota roots, all right? <laughs> so... Yep. He's learning. He's learning. We, we put extra <laughs> syllables in everything down south. Right? So, uh, but so I'm I'm growing a lot more roots, okay, and in doing that, I'm creating living space and a food source for the microbes, so I can grow a lot more microbes. And because I've got amaranth, and I've got dot and I've got dandelion and I've got clover and I've got grasses of various species and on and on then what I have is I have all of these different microbial classes and that are being recruited and why are they being recruited because each of these different types of plants their roots are secreting different what exudates. root exudates exactly different types of root exudates right different ratios of minerals and sugars and so forth. So that's attracting the different microbial classes. So now I'm building that, and if I'm building them, they're building the organic matter, they're feeding the plants and making my plants more mineral dense, okay? And that causes these plants to produce a greater array of tertiary, secondary and tertiary compounds. And as my livestock eat this array of plants, then they're consuming all these different secondary and tertiary compounds. And so again, what did we say that's doing for them? They're healthy. Okay, it's medicinal, right? So it makes them healthier, strengthens their immune system. And it does what else? Okay. Yep. Your mineral cost. Okay, save your own cost. But what did we say about Worms and things like that, even flies. Okay, exactly. These secondary and tertiary compounds also have antiparasitic properties. You know, a lot of these forms can produce things like tannins that are natural dewormers. Okay. Well, hemp squirters have tons of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. tons Les of have tons. There's a ton of things that have tannins in them. They're natural dewormers. And they also, with these secondary and tertiary compounds, they emit chemical molecules from the surface of their hide, from their capillaries, that tell flies, hmm, you know, I don't think you taste so good, and maybe I need to go find some other cows somewhere else. And you actually have far fewer fly intensities and predators. So that's one of the ways that we control flies. Yes. I was just going to say another way that plant diversity controls flies is by encouraging more biodiverse insect species. And you can really see if you look down at the dirt underneath the grasses in a dense patch, a ton of different kinds of arthropods. You can see springtails and spiders just right here. And um, having dung beetles in the dung too, which they're more attracted to the alternative uh, mob grazing method than pa regular pasture grazing. So that uh, helps control maggots and dung cats too. You see how compounding this system is? And we should go look at a dung cat. We, that, let's do that. Yeah, because you brought your gloves. So yeah. as we walk back out, make sure that we do that, okay? <laughs> What are we seeing? We're seeing some little beetles, little dung beetles here. Okay. The, the drillers? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, some yep, little drillers in there. there was some, I kind of destroyed the top now, but there were holes and pores on top. Yep. That's the tunneling. Yeah, we're going to see mostly the, yes. the tunnelers and the dwellers. We're not going to see rollers around here. Right, like the Egyptian dung beetles. Yeah, they're in Oklahoma. I've seen them. They're Did you really find cool. any dwellers in there? Yeah, um, it might be a little deeper by now.
And another cool thing is they break up the edges and then we might be able to see some holes from the dung pat into the soil going down too. So there's some holes and pores here. So that's the ones that bring the dung down and that's what he's calling the dwellers. But we could, let's go look at some more. We might see more. How large are these?